Hello, this is Nathan from AIMED Research, and I'm going to show you today how to roughly adjust the back focus on your Kronos high-speed camera. You don't need a special back focus uh, chart to do this. You can simply uh, point your camera out the window to a distant object and, and perform this adjustment. So first you're going to need to securely mount your uh, lens to your camera. So if you have a C-mount lens, and today I'm going to be using the Computar 12.5 to 75 millimeter C-mount lens. You want to make sure that you have the appropriate lens uh, mount on your camera. So this silver ring right here is obviously the CS mount, and with this 5 millimeter threaded spacer, it changes it to a C-mount. So as you can see, I have the C-mount adapter on, on the camera. So next you're going to need the Allen wrench supplied with your camera. There is a set screw right in, right in here. You're going to loosen that so that you can now, when you turn the lens, you'll see, if you can distinctly see it here, but you'll look closely at that threaded collar and you'll see it moving. So I just want to show you real quick what it looks like when you take this lens mount all the way out. So I have the the uh, set screw loosened up and I already took this brass rod out. So there's a set screw, the brass rod, and then this threaded collar that it presses into. So when it's all the way out, it looks like that. That's your native mount. This is your CS to C mount, which is essentially a uh, five millimeter threaded spacer because the CS threads and C, C, you know, C, C mount threads are the same threads. So if you end up taking this out, please make sure your camera's not upside down because you could, you know, drop your brass rod out through this hole right here. But uh, whenever I make my back focus adjustment, I'm going to start with the, the lens you know, spaced out, and then it's going to be threaded in, right? Turning this way to go in. So this is the locking version of the lens, but this next step, you want to make sure that your lens is set to infinity, but a slight hair turn back. So if it bottoms out to infinity here, right, I'm just going to slightly turn it back. And this has the lock on it, so I'm going to lock the lens in place. You could put a piece of tape across there to, to make sure it's in place. I'm going to keep the aperture at about one stop from the bottom and I'm going to have the zoom in the middle of the range, in the middle of the zoom range. Um, the reason why I have the aperture set at f2 is because at f1.2 everything looks a little cloudy. I want it a little bit sharper than the um, the most open setting, um, but ideally you don't want a lot of depth of field for this type of adjustment, so you want to keep it on the, the open side of the aperture. Um, in this case uh, I'm going to have it in the middle of zoom range simply so that whenever you zoom the camera uh, uh, the, the lens um, this is basically in the middle, so it's kind of going to going to be a the ideal, you know, spot for the lens to operate. So for this next step here, I'm just going to adjust the exposure so that I reduce the overexposed parts, but I do want it to be bright enough that I can see what's going on. A black calibration is not necessary for this. So right now I screwed the lens mount out just a little bit. See what's out. And I'm going to be making my adjustments by screwing it in. Okay, so it's out right now. I'm looking at some trees in the distance here. I'm screwing it in, 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 in. Things are starting to come into focus. 
There's actually a fence across there that, I'm, that I can see here, but I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on the video. I'm looking at the tree branches to see what is in focus. So I'm sort of back and forth here, trying to find the, the place where it's the sharpest focus on the fine details. So it's pretty much there. So at that point, that would be a decent back focus for this lens. So next, I would be securing the, uh, I'm gonna try and hold it so I'm not moving it, but secure the uh, set screw in the bottom. Just snug it up a little bit and I'm going to try this again. So now I'm going to unlock the lens. I'm going to unlock the zoom. So I'm going to zoom it in all the way. As you can see in the trees there. See how? Okay, so I'm going to go to the, the nearest the nearest uh, focus. So on this lens, it's the what the 3.5 feet one meter mark. And I'm going to focus into the distance. So I'm turning the barrel to focus to the distance. I'm looking up into the trees. And as I approach that infinity mark, everything comes into focus, and then just a hair of a turn, it goes out of focus. You see that? So I'm going to back it up a little bit. So now I'm approaching infinity. Everything's in focus right there. And as I continue to turn, it goes out just slightly. That's the ideal point where you want to be. So everything looks good there. And that was you know, the full zoom. If you wanted to be a little bit more technical, there are indicator marks on your lens. You could set the lens at specific distances on this ring. So in this case, feet is on the top in green. You know, you could set the camera to be looking at something, let's say in this case, seven feet away and see if it's in focus. A lot of times with these more inexpensive lenses, that's not an ideal thing to do because the way these lenses are constructed, the internal elements may not be exact for those those distance markings. That's my experience, honestly. So I'd prefer to do the distance um, adjustment uh, for most lenses. Every lens manufacturer is going to have a slightly different back focus. And uh, for instance, if you were to take a Nikon uh, camera and you would put uh, a Nikkor lens, a Samyang lens, uh, a Zeiss lens, you know, a Tokina lens, something like that on your on your camera, you would notice that the back focus is slightly different for each each lens manufacturer, and it's going to be con pretty much consistent with each manufacturer's line of lens. So that's that's pretty much it. To finalize, you would just want to make sure that you have snugged up that uh, set screw in the bottom fairly well because whenever you turn your lens to unmount it you don't want that threaded collar to move. So again it's the silver collar right there that you have to worry about. And if you keep an eye on the distance that it is and as long as whenever you mount the lens, you don't see anything moving, um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't really have a problem if it's snugged up enough. You don't want to over-tighten it, obviously, because you, you could start damaging <laughs> some things, the threads and, and whatnot. So. And when you're completely finished, you may have got a little bit of dust on your, uh, on your sensor or filter in there. Okay, so you do have an IR filter. Most, most of these cameras are going to have the IR filter there. Um, so you could just get a little bit of uh, a little bit of air 
blow it off. You don't want to use compressed air from a can, but if you have one of those photography squeeze, you know, air, air jets, you know, that's the way to do it. Keep your fingers off of your, uh, your sensor IR filter. So I want to show a quick tech tip. So as you can see, um, this is a larger lens. It's a larger diameter. So a lot of times whenever you take a lens like this and you, and you secure it to your C to F mount in this case, um, you may put a little bit too much torque on that uh, CS to C adapter on your Kronos camera. And it might come off on your lens and it might be difficult to get off. To remove it from something like that or if it was stuck to you know, one of your other lenses, to remove it easily in the field, you might not have any tools and it, it's not ideal to take some pliers or something like that to mar it up. So what I recommend is to take a cable, some sort of cable that you have, and obviously it's going to have a, a soft uh, insulation. And just wrap it around, wrap it around like that, and give it a nice good twist, and that'll help you get it off. You can wrap it around there like that. I'm going to squeeze it and then torque it off. So then it comes off real easily. So if it gets stuck in the field, that's a nice, easy, quick way to do it. You potentially could use your power cord, you know, a trigger cable, I don't know, whatever, whatever's there. But, you know, a lot of times a rag doesn't give you enough um, grip on it. And you don't want to use pliers or channel locks or something like that. So that's the way to do it.